Hello everyone and welcome to Steno 24-7. I am Steno Duchess and today I am dictating selection number six, 372 words on the subject of traffic act. It is at 60 words per minute. Feet flat on the floor. Take a deep breath. Find something to focus on. And let's write. Members of the jury, each party in this case charges the other with violating certain statutes of the Highway Traffic Act. It is the law of this state that a violation of any of the provision of the Highway Traffic Act by a person operating a motor vehicle upon a public highway shall be prima facie evidence of negligence. This presumption of negligence, however, may be rebutted by evidence showing that the statute in question was not violated or by evidence showing a reasonable ground for such violation. The driver of a motor vehicle whose vision is obscured by snow and wind or other atmospheric conditions must exercise care and caution commensurate with the situation. The factors to be considered when determining a driver's negligence are the speed and control of the vehicle, the extent of visibility, and the degree of care and caution required under the circumstances. It definitely appears that both motorists were driving at a speed lower than the maximum permitted under the Highway Traffic Act. But the fact that the speed of a vehicle is less than that permitted by law does not relieve the driver from the responsibility of reducing speed when special hazards exists with respect to weather, visibility, or highway conditions. It was with the duty of each of these drivers to keep his vehicle in his own lane of the pavement this collision could not have happened if each had done his duty in that respect. It is for you jurors as judges of the facts to determine where and how 
this accident happened and who was to blame whether both drivers were guilty of negligence which substantially contributed to cause the accident or if weather conditions alone were responsible should you find that both drivers were guilty of violation and the violation by each was a proximate cause of the accident then neither party can avoid liability I just wanted you to know that there was a little part in there at the towards the end not at the end but a little towards the end I kind of push you a little bit in there push you a little bit it was more like I'll just maybe push you to like 65 so you can get to kind of know what 70 feels like and um, I just wanted to push you a little bit in there to give you some you know so you can get used to hearing it a little faster I'm also going might be doing some speed building on this as well for you guys because I really want to see you guys come up out of this um, 50 60 and 70 and hit the 80s running so thank you so much for watching my video and I love you guys and happy writing.